this is the June 9th meeting of the reuse subcommittee of the Public Works Commission. And maybe our last meeting as the subcommittee of the Public Works Commission. But not our last meeting. <laughs> uh, John, do, do we have someone taking minutes? Uh, Susan, do we have someone taking minutes? You have a nice blank pad there. I'm happy to do it. I didn't want to take any of this role, though. I wasn't here, so. But we all fight for that role so much. <laughs> well, oh. I've seen that happen. Morning, Dave. Good morning. Hi. Good Fair enough. morning, David. Uh, okay, we have a visitor this morning. We're going to start off with our public comment section, which we don't often have a chance to use. So, Angie, why don't you introduce yourself and tell them what's all So, my name's Angie Gregory. Um, I live in Ward 3. I've been a resident here for about eight years. And when I first moved to the town, I created a diaper service. And it was out of my basement, and we were washing cloth diapers and utilizing the pedal people to pick up our diapers, and we had two customers. And now, today, um, we've grown a lot more, and we've moved to a commercial location in Holyoke, and last year we diverted 70 tons of diaper waste wow. through our two programs. Yes. So we have um, just regular traditional cloth diapers that we supply and launder, and then we have compostable diapers, which are this new fangled disposable paper diaper that actually can be biodegradable if you give it the right environment. That's key. So, and there's a lot of people in this area that is that are interested in those diapers. And so part of why I'm here today is to talk about how we can make that more accessible and um, perhaps more economical for people and have it be more like a pay-as-you-throw model so that diapers are being purchased a very specific kind because not every diaper that is a paper diaper can actually biodegrade. And then they can purchase a pay-as-you-throw bag and have a place to bring it. So the way we do it now is just through home pickup and drop-off, and we've contacted maybe a dozen waste haulers, and nobody's interested in picking up our material, not only because they're like, ah, diapers, but like they don't have enough compartments in their vehicle to have a separate spot for our collection. Pedal People is the only nimble private hauler, though they have restrictions themselves because they can't transfer very far. So they would only need to be able to go to two transfer stations. But, I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you guess that, that most people that are our customers live in Northampton? So it is kind of an area that we feel would be a great place to partner with municipalities. Now, I have noticed that the state has all sorts of initiatives and funding for uh, innovative recycling programs. They tend to be around film plastics and things like that. And diapers aren't really on their radar, but I've been talking a lot to the people at the Department of Environmental Protection and have been encouraging them to consider diapers as an option to be funded. Um, there's also this private fund called Closed Loop Fund that came out in 2015, and they give out like millions of dollars to municipalities and it's 0% loans. What? It's huge. Um, their term is one to 10 years. Municipalities, it's 0% interest for this loan. And they are subsidized by all the big names like um, you know, Coca-Cola, who's also our neighbor, and Goldman Sachs and Johnson Johnson and Procter & Gamble, who also makes the holds like 60% of the disposable diaper market anyway. So it'd be kind of interesting. They're putting forward funding to do closed loop initiatives. So this is like zero waste for diapering. So the other problem with disposable diapers is they're often encapsulating the excrement, right? And 90% of Americans are tossing them in the landfill. It's 27 point something billion diapers a year in the landfill. Wow. It's 4% of all the municipal Wait, solid waste. Can you say that again? 27 okay. what? Uh, it's 27.8 billion diapers a year. It's 4% of all the municipal solid waste. It's half of the volume of a uh, resident's trash that if they're using disposable diapers at home, it's half their waste. And when I talked to Ruthie, she was like, and that's by weight, right? Because <laughs> it's really by weight, like she's hauling this stuff. Um, and then as far as, you know, the contaminant part that we're talking about, 40% of all surveyed um, bodies of water that are contaminated is because of this leachate. So there's a big issue there. And if we're just going to move towards, well, because we're burying it. So 40% of all the um, bodies of water that are surveyed that have issues are coming from this particular leachate. So when you get to leachate, where is it coming from? From the, from the, the poop and pee that's in the diaper that's being buried. But how's it getting in the landfill? And through the landfill, because it's leaching into the groundwater. Yeah. So, so this is, and so the way we divert this waste is we collect it and then we bring it to a municipal composter in the state. There's not many that are permitted to handle this solid waste, but they can do it. They turn it into dirt in three months. Mines. And 
no, Martins won't take it. And I've talked to so many other local places. Mm-hmm. We have take it to Lee Care, which is way out in Marlboro. Yeah, it's it's hall. hard to find um, the DEP all, all it, it, because it's human waste. There are pathogens and all sorts of things that have to be dealt with appropriately, and there are only certain composting facilities that manage it mm-hmm. and are licensed to manage it. Mm-hmm. What's the prospect of every one of these facilities uh, in the middle or western? That's so great. I don't know. I contacted like Barstow's thinking that they, because they have a biodigester, but apparently biodigesters don't really like paper, and most of the material is a paper product. So uh, I don't really know, but I would be. I'm super geeked out about researching you it. So you know, there, there, there are in vessel systems that could be located. They're easier to get permitted because they're in vessel. Oh. Yeah. So I would say research. Yeah. Yeah. Angie, how can we help you? So, well, one thing is that apparently the way that we're collecting this now, we need to be permitted as a transfer station because we're holding on to it till we have enough waste to move it, you know, 180 miles. So we need to actually partner with a transfer station to have a roll-off container to collect and then have it move from there. Now, the idea is one, like I mentioned before, if we could have it close by for pedal people, they're the only hauler that's willing to do a pay-as-you-throw model so we could open it up to a broader base of people. They can just put it out and it gets Such as Locust Street. Yeah, Locust Street or Glendale, or, or um, sorry, Locust Street for you guys, yeah, and then the other private one is Valley, Valley Recycling. Recycling, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's our biggest deal because... Well, what did Valley say to you? Have you spoken to them? I haven't spoken to them yet. Okay. No. Curious. More space. Yeah. And I, I can't imagine that a two cubic foot or four cubic four cubic yard um, container would be that much of a real estate so issue. You're but you're looking for uh, really real estate for this container. Real estate for the container. So Valley Recycle wouldn't really need to invest anything. They just need to make space for it. No, we're willing to, to cover the cost, you know, through our private business, though we also feel like there are funds available to help support this. Yeah. But we see this as a pilot. You know, so far we've been pretty incubated. Now this is our next layer of growth, and we see this as a pilot, and then we hope that other municipalities can see this as replicable. And it's only for the compostable diapers. Yes. The cloth diapers we would yeah. still have to right. pick up and, and wash, but the compostable diapers tend to be where most people end up. It's half and half. We have half wow, of our customers great. are cloth, and half of them are compostable. And then some some of the cloth people also take a little bit of the compostable. So is this how the trend is going? One's going up, one's going down. Right? Well, yeah, and actually the cloth has kind of gone down because most people they love right. cloth, they think it's going to be awesome, and then they get into it and they're like, well, until the I have to start taking the poop off, then I want those ones where like I still feel good, but I don't take the poop uh-huh. off. <laughs> and what? How often would this be empty? Well, right now we collect two tons in about eight weeks, so I would assume with a four cubic yard we would get that out in six to eight weeks. I think we could fill that. Um, huh. So you would only fill? You would only empty it every eight weeks? I mean, probably. I mean, we we collect it like that now, and it's not offensive. And where? Not, how is it? Is it we cost? have these. Um, so the city of Holyoke gave us these um, recycling containers that were meant for the city use. You know, those big blue ones you put yeah. like out mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. curb. Yeah, curb side. And they are broken. They don't have wheels. They're cracked. They can't mm-hmm. use them. So they gave them to us, and we mm-hmm. fill those up when we have a bunch of them. It's super laborious. We're literally dragging these out of a shed and lifting bags of things into a dump truck for 45 minutes. Two tons. Yeah, uh-huh. it's super efficient. <laughs> Uh-huh. So the odor hasn't been an issue? No, but if, you if, where are you bringing them and putting them into the dumpster? So, so I mean, are they sitting in the dumpster for two weeks, or are they sitting somewhere else? Sitting in totes. Sitting in totes for two no, weeks. they're sitting in those totes outside for outside. two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And really, the ones on the bottom are the, the wet, ripe ones. Uh-huh. But everything on top is still pretty dry. So we have them inside green bio bags, right? And then they're inside double wall lawn and leaf bags, and they're all rolled up. So there's re- they, they don't really break down much there. Yeah. And right. most baby poop is not as offensive as like older kids. <laughs> Majority of our people are super small infants, but right. um, I mean we keep it on site. We have a we're in a mill building with you know five to six other businesses, and we have been doing this for three years. With no complaints, so. And and so how often is it empty now by you? About every eight weeks. Every eight weeks. Mm-hmm. And so they sit in totters until then? Mm-hmm. Or 
open. <clears throat> the first containerization of the of the uh, recyclable dye powder yeah. that's going to be composted. What color is that bag? It's green. It's a green. I don't know if you've seen dye bags. Yeah. yeah. Like a 13 gallon size is the volume of the bag that ends up being about this. It's about, you know, 10 to 12 pounds. And we put about three or four of those into a 30 gallon paper sack and roll. And, and that is also compostable. Obviously. All of that is compostable. Yeah. So if they had a digester that did work for all of those materials, not only could that not have to go anywhere, no 180 miles, but we could start making a methane comet to capture. Yeah. And at the same time, that could morph into <coughs> a dog poop program oh, for yeah. Northampton sure. with a certain kind of a bag. Okay, All of this can go to a location, mm -hmm. and now we're making that thing. Yeah, yeah. Where the Gazette? I didn't, but... There was an article about a week ago about a farm in South Deerfield, I think, who's mm -hmm. investing a huge amount of money in creating an anaerobic facility that, for the, mm -hmm. they have 500 cows, and they're you know, doing mm -hmm. cow manure, but they're also doing Stuff. It's uh, like Barstow's exceptions second kind of. But the, but the real yeah. issue becomes human waste as far as pathogens mm -hmm. and micro. Right, and dog, dog waste is the same thing. He would know. So they uh, do, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying, so because uh, I know when I was on the board of health of Amherst uh, mm -hmm. some 25 years ago, the whole issue came up of developing a municipal um, sewage department that would be. Um, which the final digestive material would be used for fertilizer. But um, there are some communities that experimented with that. And Amherst was considered a great place because there wasn't any industry that would put a lot of metals into the sewage and whatnot. But it, it all came down to the, just the rare potential for the virus sure. uh, to be spread uh, through that that, that um, just made it impossible. Yeah. So part of the issue is how you would deal with what happens at this point to that material that's digested? In that's a good question. So they they use they sell this compost for like landscaping applications mm -hmm. and um, you know for building roads underneath the pavement and all that kind of stuff. You can't use it for garden. For example. Um, I you know I don't I don't know if they are. Food. I don't think no, that they are food. unless it's processed in a certain way, which might kill some of the other organ. I mean, if it reaches a certain heat level, it's probably that's sterilized, yeah. well, but then you kill some of the other good stuff. Mm -hmm. They're you know? doing septic, yeah, they're doing septic waste composting. They are. Yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. mentioned so urban paper. Massachusetts, uh, like, well, all I can, I'll leave it with saying that historically Massachusetts has not gone there yet. Yeah, maybe, but maybe we're still progressive. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say, Dave? Examples in Maine, yeah. um, but the, the complexity of the adding the uh, bulk, the bulking material, the paper products, is uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, for an in, for an in vessel. Right. Thing? Well, the the facility that I saw was a sewage treatment, so it was it was all, mm. it was sludge. It was all sludge. Yeah. Well, so they are actually but at the wastewater are? treatment plant, so they're using sewage sludge. They're using leaves from the surrounding area. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. They love our stuff. They're like, we love having this <laughs> product. So if the first most the first simplest step would to be to have a transfer site to be able to use a part of the site. Yes, otherwise we'll probably get fined and maybe go out of business. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and the problem that we faced with that here is that this is a, a truck place. And yeah. So what, I mean, they they don't want us to put any other things here. We, we could put the recenter here. We couldn't have mm -hmm. another uh, shed here. We couldn't it's a, the, the transfer station site as it stands right now, it's pretty small and it's heavily used. Mm -hmm. It's in a traffic area where the our garage and our mm -hmm. um, mechanics are. It's just a very congested spot. Yeah, Ned always saw it as a place where he wanted his trucks to be able to pull through with traffic and, and plow and all that. And so okay. that was the issue here. But it's a great, I mean, it's other than um, that. It's so possible. I mean, we can ask. Yes, exactly. I mean, ask. we have a new DPW director. The I'm mayor's always yes. been a solid waste reduction so it's on her plate. advocate. So oh, okay. She was one who was here, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So um, rather than be naysayers, I mean, we just need to hear what you need, and then you know we can help yeah. you. Yeah. Well, How can this group help you? Oh, that's so nice. Um, well, one would be to have a, you know, to help in some sort of ability to 
have a container, maybe even help us with figuring out like where is a reliable source to get a container and a hauler that would do this, honestly and truthfully. Um, probably a four yard container. Maybe if we did a two yard, we just have to do it more frequently. And you um, say a hauler, so you need somebody that's going to transport sure, it. Sure, yeah. To Marlboro. Yeah. And from what I've understood, um, the container needs to match the hull. Like if it's a hook and mm -hmm. I don't know anything about these things, but mm -hmm. whatever. So I need to it match them before I get it. Yeah. Um, the other thing would be letting residents know once we do find a way to do this that they can divert this waste, um, maybe having it be a part of the like things you could recycle, yeses, noes, compost, yeses, yeses, you know, for diapers now. Um, and then also if you can think of other ways that we could source some funding, because certainly we're still bootstrapping as a business right now anyway. Um, this fund seems great and it can but it's be- it's just loans. Yes, it's loans, yeah. With the idea that recycling innovations can generate income for cities, so we can think creatively about how this could like your idea of creating energy out of it. Um, what do you think about it? I mean, obviously, it's diverting landfill costs to EPs, but other ways that it can actually generate income. So, so it's not clear which ways are. Um, does Does anyone know, or do you know, or do you know somebody that knows what it is that this organization in Marlboro does that is acceptable for human waste? I mean, well, what, are, what are they yeah. doing? And and because that will make that will help us understand if yeah. and if in vessel things that are on the market would actually do the trick or not, and yeah. you know, all those kinds of things. It does seem like they have a they have a vessel, so um, they're following the federal standards for pathogen removal, which does involve temperatures. They bring it to 160 degrees for three days, and then this vessel is also chopping it down to one inch pieces or smaller, and then it has a grate at the bottom to you know, grade out anything that's not breaking down after those three days so they can divert that to the landfill and then they put it into open um, aerated piles. They're aerated from underneath and they're in those piles for the rest of the time. So it's three days in the in the container and then piles for mm -hmm. three months. So, but All right. It doesn't seem impossible. I've taken up so much of your time. Angie, I really appreciate you. it. Can thank I you. leave this closed loop fund here for anybody who likes researching grants? Um, my personal one. <laughs> I think it's in the Just working bucket. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Have you been to the Reese Center? Not Andrew. yet. We might have stuff for your business there. <laughs> we have file cabinet, oak desk, you know, <laughs> bins, all kinds of stuff. Okay. You should come out. I will. I would hope to volunteer too. Oh, that's great. Okay, we'll uh, I'll add right you to the list. <laughs> I was on it. I saw the sign of genius. Okay, great. So, yeah. Okay, uh, guys. Thank you Enjoy. For thank Thanks, you so Andrew. much. Bye. You're welcome to stay. Uh, I have to, to catch a bus Go ahead. to town. Um, okay, yeah. minutes. Did everyone have a chance to go over the minutes from the last meeting? I have yeah. copies of them. Does anyone need copies? Um, anyone else? Diana, you took those minutes. I did not. Roger. Johnny, Roger. 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 Oh, Roger did, right. Yeah. I um, had that. They're, sure. they're really good. I'd like to add something if that's possible. Sure, of course. Um, I appreciate all the conversations about all the things that I was involved with that I was here for. So. <laughs> not here, not here. Yeah, and, and, and no, I think no, it was great, wasn't it? No, yeah. it was great. Um, the question about the, uh, the containers for the recycling event with the styrofoam and the mm. plastics, and I, there was a conversation about having the bigger one be the styrofoam. The problem would have been that we filled both of the smaller ones, which is 60, mm -hmm. with that cubic yard, 60. Yeah. Whatever that yeah, is. 120 There's a 30, 30, 30 to 40. 40. We filled both 30, so if we did just the 40, we would have had to either turn people away or have stuff sitting on the lawn. That's so, a good point. So I just want to add that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We good can't point. just make one big one, it won't be enough. Right. Which is why we did the two small ones, but mm -hmm. I understand not wanting to make two trips. So I don't know what the answer to that is. But we can connect to the logistics to figure out how to. And, and the and other I, one was how big? There was a 40, which okay. was the plastic, okay, I'm sorry, Peter. and the 230s. Okay. And we filled the 230s with our, in fact, overfilled. Are those our biggest containers, Susan? As far as I know. 40s, yeah, we were thinking so, that when they were 220s. Sounds like 40s. Yeah, 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 no, that was Sounds like we need more containers. Right? At the same Right, at the same time. Right. Or, or the number of trips. Yeah. Right. Or turn people the away. Problem. I mean, we have to make or could you smush them? 
styrofoam doesn't get smushed. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't yeah. that compress it. Well, we well, well, if we had that, that'd be cool, right? The problem is, the problem is that uh, we don't have that many spare containers. Mm -hmm. So to find three empty ones is pretty. I wonder great. if uh, gold, uh, what do they call it, gold circuit, circuit. circuit, would come out to the event to do a pickup if there's enough volume. That's a very oh. good point. If we're generating. Yards mm -hmm. or that's a very good point. I don't know what kind of. We should invite them. It's a Saturday. That might be an issue. But it's More of the transportation. You know, does he have a truck? Well, so he, he does have a truck as he goes around and picks up. Oh, so he does go yeah. around and he pick goes up already. He, well, yeah. he picks up. Uh, he he told us he would. Too. Well, he he came and picked up that wet load of styrofoam that we had from oh the last time. Yeah. That's a good question. That that, that would have solved it. Yeah. yeah. That that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Don't we don't need any containers. I can go right yeah, right. I mean, if we can promise, if we can promise sure a certain that. quantity, a certain volume. Yeah. What, what's the volume been for the last three? It's been pretty consistent. There you go. But Here. we had we only, we only had one dumpster last time, so we had a forty we had forty yards last time. But but if we were to say to him, look, we can guarantee that you can get forty to sixty cubic yards of yeah. styrofoam, right. it's it's a yes or no question. It's at least. A truckload. Mm -hmm. Isn't the consumption of styrofoam declining? Are, are, are users, packagers, using less of it? They may be, but uh, we're it's not sure seeing that in Northampton with people disposing of it. Could be a backload. You get the big bulky stuff that isn't decreasing. You, you get people are using less cups and stuff. But those, when, you, when you go out and buy a new TV or something, you're all packed with these. We do sometimes have cardboard blocks. Well, sometimes we do. I think mycenium is the big, big hope to take styrofoam's place because it's compostable. Oh, the mushroom stuff. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Mycenium. Oh, from mycos. Anyway, so that's the only thing about the minutes. Okay, anybody else? Any other comments on the minutes? <coughs> do I have a motion to pass the minutes so as amended? So moved. Okay, second? Second. Okay, any blocking concerns? All right. Past uh, recenter report, general update. Is that you, Matt? Okay. I've certainly been reading your general reports. Yeah. Not so general. Very specific. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the general statement would be the the, the physical space is is in great shape, um, and the staffing is still a challenge. The Saturday staffing is still a challenge. Um, we had it Wednesdays. I've kind of got a little crew out there. There's been uh, there was a new two new volunteers that have yesterday, and uh, and John, who's not here today, who's kind of taken the electronics area under his wing. Uh, there was a real flurry of creative thinking yesterday, and we re made some rearrangements to accommodate um, some areas that have really needed expansion. Like we we had a lot of. Uh, hardware is coming in lately so we started like a kind of a plumbing and an electrical section and uh, automotive section and little cubes little cubbies yeah we made little cubbies for certain types of hardware and stuff like that Elaine Findlay who comes typically on Wednesdays was extremely helpful so there's just a really nice uh, kind of buzz with people being excited about it and, and improving it so that that feels good. We also we had a few people show up yesterday who thought the recenter was open on Wednesdays. So there's some message going out somewhere along the line that we're open Wednesdays. So I just tell them, you know, we're not. O I, I, if they bring stuff, I, I accept it, but say normally we're not open and that kind of thing. Um, Could ask him. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I didn't ask him yesterday. Um, the, you know, Saturdays we kind of continue to struggle a little bit to get people signed up in advance. I mean, it, it's it's never gotten to the point where we had we had to close down. That's the concern because if we had to shut it down, I think that's really a problem for us public relation wise. If people go all the way out there on a Saturday and find it's closed, mm -hmm. um, so we we've, we've been managing to do it, but we're really far from our goal of of having like supervisors go once a month. Kind of right. thing. Um, and one thing that I've, uh, Alan and I have both had the experience of having people say to us that they tried to get in touch with us last season and never got recontacted. So what I've started to do is if somebody says to me, hey, I'm interested, just 
get them right to the sign up genius thing and tell them to sign up and we'll train them on the job and just get them in there as soon as possible because we need to have an ongoing and, and most of the stuff we do is you know it's as I said to somebody it's not rocket science you just train people while they're there and they're on the job with maybe a little bit of materials you can take them home to read or something like that and just get them in the mix get them watching the intake process get them watching the supervisor and seeing how the decisions are made they can get involved right away with the uh, recording the stuff that's flowing out and uh, and then let it grow organically because there, there are, you know, you, the, I, the hump is I think there's a lot of people interested and appreciative of what we're doing but to get them to take the step to say I'll come on a Saturday is one hump and then the next one is I'll be willing to be trained to be a supervisor or an intake person which are the most complicated jobs. So um, the key with the volunteer thing is they have to sign a release form, and then there's some kind of general background stuff that is important for them to know. That when you when you're training a new employee, you probably all have experienced this. When you're training a new employee, if, they, if you don't train them or talk to them initially, they find their own ways to do things, and then right. when you try to tell them, well, this is the way we do it. There's, it's just a lot easier just to do it from the get-go. I would recommend that we have one person that would be the go-to person that could make sure that they, they have the release form signed and, and are given any kind of materials right from the bat. It doesn't have to be me, but it, it's kind of the, what do they call it when you, um, admittance, that admittance kind of, um, that's not the right word, the intake for people, right. there's if you lose that initial opportunity, then it's a, a lot, a lot harder to to um, <clears throat> because when people first come to a, a new spot, they're open and looking for some guidelines, and right. if those aren't provided to them initially, they figure things out or think they figure things out, and then you and then when you try to tell them, well, actually we do it this way, it's, it's just um, yeah. it's not. Not yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that's been a big problem so mm -hmm. far because it's everything is so small scale. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, when I'm out there Wednesdays with these two or three people, it's like a, an ongoing conversation. Well, what should I do with this? Where does this go? How do you do this? It's just a constant conversation. It's not like we're all working in little cubicles or right. something like that. Right. So, um, and, and I think it's I think it's pretty much the case on Saturday because people when they come there they always have a lot of questions but I, I agree with you I think that you know if someone approaches us and said I'm interested here I think the first thing whoever they approach should go to our file cabinet or something out there and pull out either a sheet <coughs> of paper or I think ideally a little booklet you know if you have probably a five ten page booklet that says how we do things and say great check check this out read this up and when you and here's how you sign up and when you come then we're going to have you sign a waiver. Sure. We do have a sheet of paper in the file cabinet. The cliff notes are there. Okay. So we can certainly give yes. those. Yes. Okay. The volunteer sign-up sheets are out there. Well, the, waiver, the, the, the waivers. The waivers, are the waivers out there? The waiver should be out there. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. there's a file. Do, 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 we have the, on the do we have one online? Is there one that you can send to me? Because since uh, I'm mm -hmm. sometimes the, uh -huh. the first line of volunteers, uh -huh. I can say, that's great. Fill this out, bring it with you to the recenter. Mm -hmm. okay. we give them, give them to you, Susan? Right. Yes. And I'm going to, I have an updated list now of people who've signed them, and we will, um, you know, whatever ones we get in, right. you know, we'll, we'll just keep an, a running list because then a copy of an updated list should be either available online or at the recenter so that whoever is having people. Um, is it possible or feasible or helpful to contact some of the people who can express interest that we don't see? Say, do you have any chance you might still be interested in coming out? Well, I did send out that email you that I right. suggest that I sent. Right. So, uh, you know, a few people wrote back, and but, um, you know, I, I can't say there was a lot of response to it. We yeah. did end up getting enough people for Saturday. Right. Yeah. And that was, that was great. Well, this Saturday, I'm the supervisor. Joan signed up uh, for the morning, and you signed up for 8 to 10. 
So that means there's, at the moment, only two people from 10 to 12. So that's pretty tough. You know, we need to Yeah, I think I'm going to be able to do that. But doing so, so yeah, much. but I, you know. Yeah, I, I think I'll be able to come out this Saturday also. Yeah. Well, My if they could come at 10, that would be, yeah, would yeah. get us through. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, that's what I did last year. I would come out it to help uh, clean up at the end when I saw the word enough extremely office. helpful. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but there's, I thought there was less of a, a cleanup process this year because we weren't there is less. Stuff back. There's a bit less. There's more of a balance between people coming and taking stuff and people donating. Yeah, so the high, it just depends on. Uh, the I'll be able to start supervising again in July. That last minute. Um, that no. last minute <coughs> donation. <Seeing> the <laughs> Volunteers needed inquire. <coughs> right by the door, you know. Yeah, we've yeah. had that up. Yeah, we've yeah. had that up for a while. Yeah. There have been people that have signed up on that. And I add them to the sign of genius when that when they doesn't get used a lot. See, so, so, you know, again, last year when people came by, I said, "Oh, I really like to to volunteer," and so I would I would give them a pamphlet and say, "Here's Susan's name and information. Why don't you contact her mm -hmm. and she'll help you get signed up?" And then you never hear from them. Yeah, yeah. So somehow I think as we've said, it's, we really need to kind of jump on it and really facilitate. Right. Pat them on the back, yeah. you know. Well, <laughs> we'll Jessica's been coffee. volunteering also, right? <laughs> Jessica Gifford? Jessica uh, was out there yesterday. And I think I thought she signed up for this week. Maybe it's not until next week that she signed up again. I don't think again. we have a release one for her. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's, she was a long-standing member of this committee uh -huh. for yeah. years. Really? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, back to the release one for just a moment. I used to bring them to Deb mm -hmm. directly. Is that fun? Or do you um, want them you? It's fine to bring them to Deb. She's here. It's more convenient. Yeah. Yeah. We just need to make sure that the, the running list of who has signed them is updated. Can you and coordinate that I with her? Yeah. Okay. Can, yeah, it would be helpful yeah. if I had that list, Susan. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm yeah. going to get it to you. Right. Um, yeah. The other and, thing and, is... And we should have it Because then I can be more proactive about getting right. people to fill out these waivers. Right. We've also, I think in the past, sometimes given them to the gatekeepers to give to Deb. Is that okay? I mean, because they have money. We as give them the money. As long as we know that, as long as, as long as they get to Deb, mm -hmm. yeah. that's what's critical. But we would probably give and it, then, they got to give the money to Deb, right? That's right. So if we give it to them with the money, it's going to probably get there. Right. Right. So, right. Mac, you said if someone wants to to volunteer, you want to give them a booklet? Does that exist, or are you just suggest? Well, we have. We, Susan says we have stuff. Uh, we want to give them information, right. basic Something. basic information, immediately if possible. And that exists. The cliff notes. Give, you can give them the cliff does. notes okay. and, and a, a brochure. Well, what's your hand? What's your hand out of volunteer right? training in uh, March? Cliff notes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it exists already. Done. There yeah. might be something. A booklet does not, and I made a note to myself about. Maybe when people Maybe ask, <coughs> um, when people ask, uh, oh, what, how do you volunteer or something like that? Um, what if you immediately said, oh, well, we'll send you something via email or we'll contact you? Absolutely right. And then capture that name, that contact information, right from the start. You're absolutely right. That's yeah. what we need to do is. And then you can still give them paper and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And what I've been doing is I, I immediately take their email address, and when I go home. I send them a link to the sign up yeah, or to David. Uh, this is an ongoing problem for all organizations. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And it's not like, you know, in the end, it's not like we need 50 people. Right. We need five or 10 people, really, that are willing to step up. And again, it's not every Saturday. I think, in our, in our you know, I think the idea that someone, it's reasonable to think. Um, we should try to get to a point where people can come out one or one weekend or two weekends, maybe a month. And most, you know, most people. I mean, you're competing with all kinds of things on Saturdays. That's the thing. There's all kinds of things, and especially in summer. But um, you know, it's not like you're signing on for every weekend or every other. And weekend. you're done by noon. Yeah, and you're done by noon. You still have the day. It might help to have a kind of. I don't want to say brochure, but a, spe but a special kind of handout for volunteers besides the cliff notes. Yeah. For people expressing interest so that we can That's explain. If, you know, Very simple. People are a little hesitant to sign on to being a volunteer if it's really not clear what they're volunteering for. If we say our idea. goal, you know, you, our, our goal would be to have you volunteer at least once a month 
on a Saturday and, and possibly come on Wednesdays if you can't, you know, or, or, or one Wednesday and one Saturday, you know, whatever it is that we decide right. so that they, they feel that they see that we're not asking them. So anyway, is there somebody that would be willing to draft something like that? Oh, look at them. Okay, that'd be great. Um, we had had a visit from Donna, the new PPW director. She was very enthusiastic and really had a, a lengthy tour of the facility. Asked a lot of questions, had a lot of things explained to her, and just seemed very pleased with what she saw. So I have a specific question about that. Did she, when she was there, see the Part of the annex that needs a new oh, okay. header beam. <laughs> okay. Oh no, the beam? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that there was a place in need. I, I showed it the roof. We talked about that. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I felt like we've showed this. We're oh, sure, we showed it to you during that orientation. It was on the far wall above where the truck is. The two beams that coming out of the back wall. The beam the I'm not remembering. Okay. There's a physical DPW issue in the building needs to be addressed. I don't think it's hugely complex, but it needs attention. And, and the beam is a steel beam? Or no, no. It's, it's actually two pieces of wood that are, are joined but not joined well, and there should be a post underneath them, and instead there's a post next to that site. If that post was moved over underneath the, the split, it would be useful. Okay. Or an so additional what post was put you in. You called it a, a header beam? But it's not actually. And it's place. over near the annex. It's, it's in the, the annex, annex behind just, where Scott parked his truck. It's the north wall, adjoining our area. Um, I was going to also just mention one thing that's developed in the last couple of weeks, which has been really positive, is uh, Maria, who's on the um, the subcommittee has taken it upon herself to make a connection with the Grace House, which is a battered women's shelter in Northampton. And she and there's a lot of young kids there, and we've had a lot of young kids stuff that hasn't been moving. And she um, has gotten into uh, taking pictures of stuff with her phone and then sending it to them. And then they've indicated, yeah, we need this, we need that, and then she's Knowing that they want it, she has actually delivered it to them, and and, um, and a number of things. There are things that have been in our center for a long time, and I'm beginning to wonder: should we call these because nobody else will take them, and, and they're, they've been taken. And she's working on, you know, building up uh, interest, an interest level there to get them to come out. She, does, she said that she'd done that, that they were going to come. Yeah, they're supposed to come maybe this Saturday, yeah, I yeah. think. Um, so you know, it's just kind of a great model of a way to prime the pump a little bit, I think, with, with some of these organizations that um, they need to, you know, you've got to kind of put it on the table and let them see what they could, the benefits are, and Absolutely. then getting them come out. So that's been really great. The just concern that I have, just as a, a general cautionary thing, is that we want to make sure that we remain sustainable. And if we start delivering stuff to people all the time, that's a really hard thing to be able to sustain over the long term. But if I think her model of delivering to show them what we've got and them, then get them, get them interested. Excited. She's Absolutely. not a member of the committee when she does that. She's an individual. Right. And so that's that's the critical right. difference. Right. Right. And and you know, I mean yeah. if if we can find enough individuals who are willing to do that, that's another thing. But it's to put that on um, our volunteers as an expectation no. or on us no, as no, an no. expectation. No. It's no. just and she's just caution. doing it as right. Yeah. We've also had an individual, Sue Brinus, who has volunteered for us before, is a regular volunteer at the Cancer Connection Thrift Shop, and she's been coming out uh, every Wednesday lately and taking stuff, not a ton of stuff, but taking some stuff for them to resell for their thrift shop, which I think is a great thing, too. So That's happened with Dakin as well. There's a volunteer who's come. Yeah. There's volunteers at Dakin yeah. also, and she's yeah. taking some things for their You children. know, one thing that we had talked about early on that David had recommended that was not addressed, really, was the importance of a volunteer coordinator, perhaps a paid position as a volunteer coordinator. And maybe, you know, as we talk about um, goals and vision that's something that should be looked at you know uh, can we pay someone part-time to be a volunteer coordinator or 
or you know, um, I'm having discussion. I'm starting to have discussions with Donna about what what my position is supposed to be doing, or should be doing, or can do for the re center and for the reuse committee. So that's an on you know, it's, she has a lot of stuff on her plate, so it's going to be. A, You're trying to get clarification between clarification. all of your responsibilities right. in the re center right. because it's really easy to be overwhelmed and you have other responsibilities. Right. The events are very critical, there's responsibilities with that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great that you're talking to yeah. about Yeah, it. it's just, a, we just had a preliminary conversation, but the, it will be ongoing. The funding for the volunteer coordinator is, the, is one of the big questions. Funding, yeah, 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 absolutely. Right. But you know, and if, and if, if Donna and the mayor decide that, that more of my time. I mean, the part of the it challenge was in the last 18 months, you know, when we were going full steam opening, I pretty much worked exclusively with with the recenter stuff, and I can't do that anymore. No. So that's it's just been a uh, it's evolved. You know, my job is evolving and um, and changing, and it's not clear. We'll get some clarity. So what what was your feeling from me? How she feels? Bro, your ass. Oh, sorry. What page? Uh, all right. Oh, she's she's very enthusiastic and supportive. She said, I, I think what you guys are doing is great. You know, um, she's, you spoke with Rose both of her, too, but what was your Same thing. Yeah. And I did bring up the fact that, and I was going to just clarify this with David, we were trying to get the new budget for this coming year, and then that's what a lot of administrative issues between Ned and Jim leaving there we had trouble getting the budget so we never saw the budget for 2017 and we didn't get an update on the budget for 2016 so I don't know what has happened with the $7,000 line item in terms of what was left after 2015 and so and like that's where the volunteer coordinator would have to come in and so that's information that we don't know and I mean that the commission did not know and that is like um, uh, it's out outstanding information that would be nice for us but it's it's for the, the department to make the decisions on. Susan? Uh, are we ready to talk about the roof? Yeah. Uh, what, Matt, are you done with the update? Well, I was just going to say one or two other quick things. One is, in, in relation to um, the seven thousand, the phantom $7,000, there, there was a lot of talk yesterday about the space and how flexible the space needs to be, and someone mentioned that they had, um, in another facility they had worked in, they had these shelf units that were um, movable shelf units, you know, that were on cat very, and we we have that one stainless steel one mm -hmm. that, that's a sports area that that the shelves are adjustable and they're movable so that if you needed to you know expand an area or you needed to move them aside to have a meeting or something like that, um, this person was saying they're ideal for that. That makes a lot of sense for uh, our space. Yeah, because <coughs> we're constantly having to make adjustments basically. Mm -hmm. so. Metro shelf, restaurants use more. So anyway, yeah. that's that's. Rough. Yeah. Well, it was going back to, um, it's sort of following up on what you were saying, that in an earlier discussion, when I did talk to Donna, I did mention that um, Ned's concerns about having um, uh, the recenter be located on the Locust Street transfer station. And he was very reluctant because of all the business. But one of the outcomes, had we seen the budget, would be to know, like, has business gone down? Has Valley Recycling siphoned off enough business that it's not quite as business that we could have the transfer station here? I mean, obviously it wouldn't be this the year. Recent. Uh, thank you. The recenter here. So she was there. She actually brought that up, and then I just sort of gave her some background on that. She also like mentioned having it at the water department that we could do a whole new facility. And like the problem with that is there aren't people coming there. So she well, it's on. Well, I know, but it's not like people coming on a regular basis to do their transfers. Um, so I'm just saying it's on her radar screen. Right. So she was very open. Good. The more we connect with people doing the transfer, which is what we're doing. Yeah. You know, 
Well, it's the it's, it's that whole, zero recycling. Yeah. I mean, zero waste um, recycling park. Yeah. Yeah. I Resource do. recovery center. She's, Resource she's been very center. she's very aware about our location challenge. Yeah. She's very. Any more information about the place down the hill, like right next door? I uh, know because that mayor the mayor had stopped that. Okay. The previous mayor had gone down that road, but the current mayor put the kibosh on that. And it, partly it's because the state is real, it will not pay for okay. their dumping. Remediation, right, yeah. yeah. That's changed. This $923 million in the budget for taking over gray sites, brown sites, whatever they're called, if they are going to be, if there's a plan to put them into a productive use. Yeah, but it's not specific about this, this site. No, but you just have to apply. So You have to, t I mean, that. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's Donna or the mayor, but. No, that's I available understand. and the city could get that for virtually nothing. I understand. Okay. Uh, Susan, roof update. Roof update. Um, we've had some, the continuing saga of the roof, we have some very bad news. The fellow who was going to do it has had knee problems and is leaving the roofing business. His father said that he would do it himself, but he doesn't have the workers' comp and insurance that would be required. He said it's an easy job. It is a um, not a dangerous job, in his opinion. But we do have to follow the protocol, which means that we have to find a roofing company that will either pay prevailing wage or a sole proprietor that would do the work him or herself. Does so, it, doesn't uh, the guy's father qualify for a sole proprietor? Yes, but he doesn't have insurance. He's not in business. Mm -hmm. he, he used to do that kind of stuff, but he doesn't anymore. So what we should look at, so I did call one other person that has a roofing company in Florence, Florence Roofing, who has connections to the DPW, and he said, uh, I'm not interested, pretty much. And I said, well, before you say that, let me, let me go back and understand completely what is required, and then you can tell me no. And, and I spoke with Joe Cook, who's the uh, procurement officer, and he said they need to have um, workers' comp, and um, they need to have some liability insurance, and we need to pay them for bail wage. Those are kind of the three things. And the only way they can get out of prevailing wage is if it's a sole proprietorship. So because the job is small and because we really mostly care about one the, the, the roof, I think that we need to um, look at maybe, uh, it came up at yesterday's meeting or Tuesday's meeting, uh, handy, handy people who are willing to do small roof jobs. I'm going to talk to Dave Pomerantz from Central Services to see if he's aware of anyone who would do something like this. And I'm going to send out an email to my colleagues in other communities to see if they're aware of roofers that, um, you know, are sole proprietors that would be willing to, to do this. There's no city employees. You know, the city employee, um, I asked Donna about that yesterday, and the city employee that used to do it, it's my recollection that Ned said that he wasn't going to be doing those things because he's had so many various injuries. Um, but Donna doesn't know because she's new. So it needs, we need to explore that a little bit more. And the possibility but, um, of it being volunteer? The possibility of it being volunteer, um, I spoke with Joe Cook about, and the volunteer, if a hammer dropped or a ladder fell on top of someone, the vol that would be covered under the city's liability. If the volunteer, him or herself, was injured, we would not have coverage for the person. Because so, they've signed the waiver, right? Yeah. Uh, so That's how it was for the whole construction. Right, all but it's a, little, it's a little different one when it's a roof situation. So one thing that he did suggest could be possible is if we hired a professional roofer to consult with the volunteers about how to do it, whether you, you know, safety harness, you know, whatever, so that 
this person could kind of do what Bob Reckman did as far as, you know, no, you don't want to be doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that is something that is, um, that, that he said would, would make some sense. Um, but I, I think the first thing needs to be talk to Dave Pomeranz and, and check with check with other people about single proprietors that would be willing to do this. So I mentioned yes and no a single proprietor, but mm -hmm. so it's sort of the time is back to find it. Oh yeah. <coughs> so give me, give me his or her name. Well, I, I wanted to I, I don't want to be in the middle of that. I just want yeah. to say call Susan. Absolutely. Okay, any other ideas for Susan? Places she can go? Um, All right, let's move well, on. Well, I, I had one other yeah, go ahead. thing, um, and that is stickers. Uh, the transfer, uh, stickers at the Glendale Road Transfer Station. All volunteers need to have stickers. I think we everybody understands that. Um, if you have a sticker and it's on your other car and you're a volunteer, you know, just notify Deb or I and we'll make sure that the gatekeepers know that. So you're not allowed We've to volunteer unless problems. you have a sticker. That's right. Okay. There, there, there's been some, there have been some problems and it's, it's, it, it's frustrating for the gatekeepers. Yeah. Um, the other thing the new that's come in. up, the new stickers are in, and next year they will be available earlier. The other, the other thing that would be worth talking about, and we can talk about it at our next Tuesday meeting if necessary, is that some kind of a coupon for a, a single time, first time visitor. If we had some some coupons available, you know, we could all carry a, one or two in our thing and say, you know, you should come out and visit. It, something that they could hand to the gatekeeper that will say that one time, you know, this is a one time shot. Love that. Um, yeah, because love that. sometimes we have people that we send, we say, oh, you should check it out, and it's, um, and that's the kind of thing that we could then distribute to teachers, you know, to get mm -hmm. teachers to come out in the fall right. or summer and stuff like that. Terrific. Yeah. So, yeah. that's it. Do you Love have that. any, uh, if I, yeah. I was just yeah. going to ask if you have any updated numbers on what stuff has gone out? No, I don't. Okay. And tons? Three and a half tons for it was, April? It was, it, uh, you know, um, what was reported in here what, what was written down in the in the original minutes was wrong, and I updated it with the correct stuff. Oh, so whatever's okay. in here, 1.5. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yes, 188 people took things and made 1.5 times. Okay. All right. Um, well, why don't we do the next meeting date first, and then we'll go back to action plans. Okay. Um, July 14th, Susan. Is that the second Thursday of That's the July? Second Thursday of July. All right. Anybody have a problem with that? Do we bring on muskets? Bastille Day? <laughs> no guillotine stuff. <laughs> Unless you can chop garbage up. Or diapers. <laughs> you want to do August also while we're at it? Sure. Yeah. Second Thursday? Does that work for everybody? I'm away at that point. Do so. you have an 18? Uh, I'm not around on the 18th. August is August, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pick one and yeah. okay. that's yeah. fine. Okay. Uh, action plans for summer goals. Susan, is that you? Well, I'm looking at because our time is short. I'm looking at this list of summer goals and. Four of the six that we discussed last month are related to the recenter. So I would propose that we just have the recenter working group uh, talk about these the next time we meet, if that makes sense for people. Okay. The two that are not related are the, well, they are somewhat related. Who takes what, make more accessible to the public, and email migration. Um, and I, I don't know if these are, you know, we talked about these goals. Did we commit to these goals? Not necessarily. This is stuff we'd like to have happen. So it might make more make sense to commit to one to kind of prioritize these last two. The last two being make who, who takes what more accessible to the public and, and and email migration to a more efficient and user-friendly platform, which will directly affect volunteers for all of our events and notification and, and recruitment, which is another goal. 
Um, it, that, that, in those, my those eyes, are two great probably, goals. Excellent. Well, but I can't commit to both of them. No, I, I get that. Um, so we'll we, have to take so on some of the responsibility. Which, which, you know, which ones do you? Which of those two? Which, which one do you guys think is the most important? Well, I would definitely vote since you have to. Be very much involved in the email migration to work with John here or I was I was gonna work with John. <coughs> right. Well that to me is the biggest stumbling block to us getting in touch. So from my point of view. And we have we have some who takes what information already from Anna. That's right. And it's we had talked at some point about just taking it to Paradise Copies and blowing it up and put it posting it at the recenter. But I don't know that hasn't happened. And I don't but know. That's if not something Susan needs to do. Right, she like doesn't need to do that. that. Yeah. So why don't we focus you on the email migration and we can but, volunteer but other things. But public access to that, I think you're talking about something broader than people that come to the reuse right. center. Yeah. We're talking about posting it online right. in a right. place where when right. people Google right. what where do I put that it'll come up. That's that's a social media function. And uh, you know. It needs to be housed somewhere, and that's, an, that's a whole other project, given um, the platform that we use for the web and stuff. Server. It's not that it's a problem, but it's another project. Mm -hmm. Server. It has to be on the, yeah, it has to be some, located somewhere on the server, but then you have to you have to make it available to people with the tools that the city, the platform that the city uses. So you're suggesting it should be on the different platform? No, the, the platform is like the, it's the right. software that's used. Right. To, I mean, the, the, the server is where it's stored, and then the platform is where it's um, software. So if there's somebody outside of the city to use that. They can access it, but they can't use it. Right. So what we if we did have a separate, it. what if we did have a whole separate recenter dump something? No, no, that's not I right. am. I don't think. Because of city issues. Because this is part of the city. It's part of the city. So it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, we could, if, like, if we reinstated the Green North Anthem site, well, we could park it there. That's so exactly that would be fun. That's just the kind of thing Green North Anthem used to do. Can we put it as it exists now on Facebook? As no, a, Facebook um, doesn't have storage for that kind of stuff. They don't, they don't, you can't really put documents on Facebook. I mean, you can post them. People can have access to them, uh, but even posting them, I don't think you can post a word on a regular. You would post a link to a document. Uh, to uh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So that's something we should talk about. That that'd be a good use of great or that legacy. But yeah, I I don't know. I don't know how it would work with having a city thing posted on a non. You know, it, whatever. It's just the one. But what one thing that I do want to bring up is that once things get clearer about where we, um, where, what my position is supposed to be doing, I would, I have a fantasy about writing a, a DEP grant for working on the who takes what and making it either, you know, a, a big regional, thing. yeah, I mean, there's all, it doesn't have to be regional, but, you know, putting it, making it more accessible, making it uh, available to realtors, I mean, there's like all sorts of, of, of stuff around that that could be really amazing, and I think that they would be willing to do a, a grant, but we just have to figure out what what our goals would be and who would be involved. Realtors are so critical. They're so often left with crap lying around in a house when a seller leaves. And they just want it out of there. They don't have time. I, I have stuff in my garage from a house that my wife sold, and you know what do we do with it? Some of it, maybe. Did, did you get to look at the link to the Franklin County who takes what basically? I've seen it before. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that seems like a good. It's a searchable yeah. model. Yeah. It's well, nice it's so. kind of and it's it's similar to the thing that we publish in the right. But it's searchable digitally. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. Okay. Uh, any new business? John. There's a strawberry social in River Valley. I said I would do that. David Shear called me and said he would also do it. Oh, excellent. Is there I, someone yeah, I don't talk even, to about what it means? Yeah, I, I he can talk to me or he can talk to um, Jessica Tanner. 
So we already we have I, we should be set. I mean, if John can help, that's great. We um, David, Maria said David she, can help. I'm sorry, David. Yeah, he said and, he would do yeah, it. Yeah, David. He was there last year. So. And and you said that you would do it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have John, David, Maria, and and Jessica at this point. Yes. I agree with it. Yeah. All right. So and just call Jessica or you well, know, I've done it before too. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you can talk. You can talk to me okay. too, John. I have. Okay. Um, the guy's name, and I so I will pass everybody's name along to the organizer. At, um, is it still Tom? River Valley. Tom at River it's Valley. The, yeah. yeah. Any other He's business? done it for ages too, and with us. So he okay. Knows. Anybody? Uh, Diane has become an expert in repairing rocking horses. <laughs> <laughs> On your commands. You want that? You want that minutes? And that repair cafe minutes that needs to go. I would just like to say that it's so exciting to see the recenter evolve. Mm -hmm. I, I was out there on Wednesday, and Max showed me the, the new kind of plumbing, you know, uh, utility area, and it's just it's really it's really amazing to see what what this is becoming. And I want to thank all of you and, and give you kudos because it's you're an amazing team. Thank you. Thank you, our leader. Uh, move move to adjourn. I'm a, I'm a Motion. Uh, move, move to Second. adjourn. Second.